Hey guys, so I'm still learning Clojure, but I want to make more Clojure videos, and this is a website that's basically this book, Clojure for the Brave and True, where you can read it online for free, so if you just press this button, do the normal stuff, and I think it'd be fun to just do the, the toy problem, or the toy project in some of these. I might make more of them, but... We're just going to start with the first one, which is uh, we're going to make a data model for a hobbit, and then we're just going to hit the hobbit, like, randomly. So, something fun like that. Um, so, I'm going to use Line again to create a new app, and I guess I'll just call it hobbit. Boop, 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 boop. And, yeah, let's open it up. So Hobbit, boop, boop, boop. and I'm going to put it on the left, <clears throat> and alright, so first things first, let's open up our REPL, so I'm going to do line REPL, and I'm also going to make sure to make a new window so my face doesn't hide stuff. Um, okay, REPL, doing REPL stuff, <clears throat> and let's connect to our REPL, and let's just check to see if we're connected, so I'm going to do main, which prints out hello world, and we do by, and rerun main, it should change, and to by world, and that's good to go. Alright. So the reason why I have this open is because I'm going to copy and paste the data model because I don't want to write this by hand because it's a, it's a little annoying. I'm going to also close the explorer and let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is get uh, matching parts. So you'll see that all of these are the left side of the um, of the Hobbit. So we need to fill out the right side. And the first function we're going to create is called matching part. Matching part, which takes an array, or not array, uh, takes the arguments of the part. And it'll return, let's see, name closure.string slash replace. name and of the part do, 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 do. so the regex of left with right okay so that's what we're gonna do I'm actually gonna add the alias here so require closure dot string as str here just to make things a little easier so what we're doing is we're going to take the name of the of the argument out and if it says left we're also we're going to replace it with right and let's see make sure that i did the thing right they were also going to uh just uh, return the size as well. Size of the part. So this part is um, destructuring the attribute from the argument. So we can test out this function really quick by going back into the REPL. And <clears throat> let's see. Uh, let's go with name of left um, thing, size of 3, and it's replaced with right thing, and size of 3, so it's basically returning the same thing, um, or the right side of the same thing. Of course, we if we do this to something that doesn't have, um, uh, the prefix of left, it'll just return the exact same thing back. Okay, and the function that they give us um, 
to symmetrize the entire map of stuff is called symmetrize body parts, which takes in the asymmetrical asymmetrical body parts and does some stuff. The first example uses a loop where we do remaining uh, asymmetrical parts and asymmetrical body parts, final body parts, and then an empty list, or empty vector, I mean. And it uses a conditional, so if it's empty, no, not that one. No, wait, actually, yeah, that one. Asymmetrical parts, then we'll just return the final body parts. If it's not empty, then we'll use a let block here to get parts and remaining from remaining asymm parts, and we'll recursively um, call the function over and over again. Remaining asymmetrical parts into final body parts set parts matching parts part okay so to quickly go over this um it takes one argument the asymmetrical body parts and it'll just loop over it um over and over again until it's empty. So this is the base case for the recursion. Otherwise it will take into it will add the pieces into final body parts until it's empty and then it'll return final body parts. So to see this in, in action you just do call the function and uh, what is the name of the actual variable of the map? It's asim hobbit body parts. Unless I did something wrong. Did I do something wrong? Oh crap. Did it crash? Oh, that's weird. Am I in an infinite loop? Oh, that's not good. I think I am. Okay. Let's find out why. There's a function. That's good. Can we do it again? Symmetrize body parts. Asim Hobbit body parts. Let's see. Do, do, do. Remaining final body parts. If it's empty, return the thing. If not, then we'll take part and remaining. Oh, yep, there we go. That's that's where the if okay. So now there we go. Okay, so we're getting the the entire Hobbit back, so all the left stuff has the right stuff, and I made the problem, or I made the the mistake of not referencing remaining. So when we did the recursive function, I was actually um, sending in the wrong argument, so I was just doing an infinite loop, like I thought. All right. So, uh, was it closure for the Braven? And bold, no, brave and true. That's the name of the book. Okay, um, they offer a, a different uh, loop or a better one. So instead of this, which we we could comment out, um, they created an, a better one where it uses reduce 
instead of this loop. And it is over. I need to scroll down a bit more. There it is. Yep. So I'm just going to call it the same thing. But they, they called it better symmetrized body parts. But once again, it takes in the asymmetrical body parts. S. There we go. And we'll use the reduce function, which takes an anonymous function here with the arguments of final body parts and part. And once again, we're going to put it into the final body parts of the set of part, a matching part, and part. And let's navigate through all these parentheses. I believe this is the right one. All right. So, so the two um, arguments here are being provided here. We're putting all the values into this uh, vector, and the initial or the the vector that the reduced function is being mapped over is asymmetrical body parts. And if we rerun the function, it should give us the exact same output, which it does. So left eye, right eye, and then finally, um, now all we have to do is create a function to hit the hobbit. So defn hit, and we're going to take in, uh, not that. Uh, argument that we're going to name asymmetrical body parts and let's see let's so there's a let block symmetrical body parts symmetrized body parts asymm body parts and let's see it opens here okay body part size Sum. So this part, and of course the last part is target. Rand body part size sum. All right. So symmetrical parts is we're just running the function that we created to symmetrize all of the asymmetrical parts, which will give us out this entire output. Body part size sum is adding up all the sizes. So the um, so basically if we run in the REPL, we could see this the sum of the entire um, do, 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 do. So the sum of the entire body parts, which I'm just going to do this. Um, symmetrize asymmetrical body parts. Is, what's the name of it? Asym Hobbit body parts. And then let's make sure we close all of this stuff. And the entire sum of the body parts are 85. So the target is just going to get a random number between 0 and 85. And then finally, we're going to do a loop here of separating part and remaining once again. Sim parts. This is the right. Yeah, it is. Okay. Uh, accumulated size. And then a tiny conditional to see if accumulated size is bigger than target. If 
parts and then recur remaining accumulated size size alright so I'm gonna quickly run this a couple times and and then explain the loop a little bit so whoops attempting to call unbound function is it unbound hit why is it unbound uh, that's hmm loop Looks good so far. There's the if. That's odd. Let's see. Symmetrize, body part size, blah, 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 blah. Target, random, loop. Remaining. Remain thing. There we go. So I just had a typo. So now the function is correct. And if we just run it, we'll hit the right knee first, and then the back, and then the mouth, and the right thigh. Right thigh. That's weird. Um. So what's happening is that we're generating a random number and then we're going to loop through the entire list um, accumulating the size of the body part until until it hits the target basically um, which is a little hard to to um, visualize and explain so what I'm going to do is I'm going to print out the let's see target well, I'm going to print out the target up here. And then over here, I'm going to print line the accumulated size. So that you can see it taking effect. So, so here's the target, which is 61. And then the first body part that we hit is going to be 3. And then the next one is going to be size of 1, but we're adding it to the 3, and so on, until it hits 63, which is greater than 61, which means it's the right knee. So if we do it again, this time it's 26, and after 23 we hit something that is size of 10, which, oh, that doesn't make sense, but that is a large number. Um, but, yeah. So this is the toy problem that is in the third chapter of Closure for the Brave and True. Yeah. I don't know why I keep saying Brave and Bold. Too much Batman lately, I guess. Um, so, I don't know. It, hopefully it helps you understand a little bit more Closure and, and make you aware of this book, which I, I'm enjoying a lot lately. It's a lot more humor than normal programming books, so it's nice. And maybe I'll do the next one in the next video or something. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time.